Hi, this is Michael Buffer, and you're listening to the voice of the people. Let's get ready for Boxing Voice. BoxingVoice.com. What broke him down? Was it just the body punching? I was hitting him with body punching. I heard him actually crying in there. You're saying that big you're crying when you hit him? Yes. When when did that happen? And perhaps the fourth round on. Boxingbooks.com. So you knew you had him by that time. Absolutely. I knew you were fucking tough and you were taking no punches. Quality BLC Productions. Making women dresses like, oh, oh, oh. Let's go, champ. I'm a team like he's a C plus fighter. I'm a dominant I'm a dolphin fighter. I'm talking about punch. We gonna punch you for 12 rounds. Either the referee says you have We about to punish you for about 24 hours straight of TBB podcast. Hashtag TBB podcast. We are back with another one. This time the Rick's the Ricky Burns. Ricky Burns, ladies and gentlemen. Putting his title on the line against Julius Andango, who scored the big knockout over Edward Travosky to shock us all. And this is a significant fight because the winner of this can possibly unify a division with Terrence Crawford, who has the other two titles in this division. So definitely something we need to discuss. This definitely makes sense. Not to mention that Manny Pacquiao has built most recently been mentioning a one Ricky Burns as a possible opponent. That probably didn't happen because of Jeff Horn. But if Ricky Burns gets another title, well, he's got another shot at possibly being in the runnings with uh, Manny Pacquiao. Let me get to none other than our very own producer in a uh, how, how's the weather out there in California anyway? You know, we're notorious for the sunny weather, but it's been storming out here lately. Like I'm talking flash floods, mudslides, like the worst of the type of like rainy weather that California gets. And it's, uh, it's not fun, man. Not fun. My work boots are still soaked from yesterday. And I uh, got to go out and buy a bunch of new pairs of shoes just so I can get through the day. Not fun. Damn. But, you know, but I'm excited for the show. The luckily, show is fun. Luckily, we're here and we could talk some boxing. Take your mind off of that uh, craziness. Let's talk unifications. Let's talk uh, undisputed. Let's talk road to redemption. So many things. This fight signifies so many things for myself and Ricky Burns. Me as a hardcore boxing fan, but Ricky Burns, it's kind of like redemption. He, We thought his career was over. Here he is, a champion again, and now trying to unify. And ultimately, there's no doubt in my mind that Bob Arum, Terrence Crawford, wouldn't make him, Ricky Burns and Eddie Hearns an offer they can't refuse to do the rematch again back in Ricky Burns' hometown. Terrence Crawford wa wasn't afraid the first time. So Julius Andango, Ricky Burns is a lot of significance in this lightweight division. It's officially set for April 15th at the SSC Hydro in Glasgow, Scotland. Um, I love it. I love it because I didn't know anything about Julius Andango until obviously the beautiful highlight reel knockout that we'll be showing you a little bit later um, of Edward Travosky. So, I mean, you know, my model simply has always been, I'll watch him when I got to watch him. That was a time I had to watch him because of all the, you know, hype surrounding the one Edward Tronowski and how Terrence Crawford was possibly ducking him. So then Julius goes in there and blasts him out. I'm wondering, could he do that to Burns? I never seen anyone ice Burns. You know, you got to wear Burns down. And, um, you know, some thought Burns won that Figueroa fight. Burns may just have a resurgence of his career. He's got this title now, and he's going for this unification. Guys, tell me you're excited as I am. Uh, I'm, I'm super excited. And uh, hi, I'm Matt, the editor. Thanks for the introduction. And I, I think that Burns, 
uh, even though I think a lot of people in the in the United States kind of hate on him, he is without a doubt a top ten Scottish boxer of all time. You know, obviously he's not a Cam Buchanan or like a Benny Lynch, but uh, Ricky Burns has is the biggest name in Scottish boxing right now. He is, you know, I I went to Scotland a couple years back uh, for a couple of weeks, and I remember asking. It was right after his loss to Terence Crawford. I remember asking a lot of people about him. I was in Glasgow, his hometown. I was in Edinburgh, and there was a a tangible, almost like depression when when his name was brought up. It was like, man, like yeah, he lost, you know. And there was almost like a a, a defeatism uh, when uh, when they were talking about him. It was really sad, actually. You can tell that he is very loved in Scotland. So that there's no shocker that this fight's in Scotland. It's going to sell out there, and I think this fight's an, an awesome hardcore fight. I think, you know, I'm one of the few people that picked Julius Ndongo to beat Edward Tronofsky, and he knocked him out with a clean, clean counter left. You know, if he lands a type of shot against Ricky Burns, then he, he can potentially knock out Ricky Burns. But Ricky Burns has the experience factor. He is the greater boxer in terms of resume. He has seemed to be declining. So it, there's a lot of X factors with this fight, but I am hyped on it. Yeah, man, I am too. What about you, Stephen? Uh, Yo, I think... I think that Mavis went super hardcore saying that, uh, you know, he's one of the top 10 uh, Scottish fighters of all time. I can't name 10 Scottish fighters. Um, so uh, I did read, though, recently that um, Ricky Burns is uh, the first, I believe, Scottish fighter to um, get titles in three weight divisions. I mean, Ricky Burns has been around for a while. We've all known his name, his, his resume. He's fought a lot of the top guys in and around his divisions. And I think that he's a better boxer and I mean obviously the only thing I know of Ndongo is his one you know his one round blasting of uh uh Treyomsky Treyomsky I'm still having difficulty I just learned Trevosky's name man Troynovsky like, yeah Troynovsky you know we we were all just becoming familiar with Troynovsky be like okay is he a real serious threat to Terence Crawford and he gets you know put away pretty early so I think that this guy even though he's coming off of that big knockout I, I saw that that knockout. It looked kind of sloppy. I don't know. Maybe I'm the only one who thinks that, but I don't think he's gonna be able to have the. Uh, uh, he doesn't have the the skill or the. What's that word called? Uh, Technique. Shit, fumbling here. No, he doesn't have. He doesn't have the experience. There it is. He doesn't have the experience to be in there. I think with the Ricky Burns for. For uh, I mean, maybe he'll get that early knockout, but I think Ricky Burns outboxes him and gets a clear decision, and then he becomes clearly the next opponent for Terrence Crawford. I think that's what this fight represents most is who is the next legit uh, opponent for Terrence Crawford. If he can't get a Pacquiao fight, you know, he's going to – obviously, he's probably going to fight another name that Bob could find that could dig up for him. But I think the winner of this fight, I think in, in my mind, would be tender to – Terrence Crawford, who I believe is the champ of the division. I think if Burns win, man, he becomes an option for Pacquiao. They were just talking Ricky Burns Pacquiao two, three days ago. Unfortunately. But this is the last fight left for Terrence. If he could somehow land the winner of this fight, it would be a unification to be undisputed. Okay, see, now Danny Garcia was never that. Timothy Bradley was never that. Amir Khan was never that. I don't remember the last time we had a junior. person, I believe. Who who was that? Yeah. Yeah, dude. So I think that if if Crawford is able to get the winner of this fight, I mean. You still have AB, though. You still have Adrian Broner. He's well. As of right now, who's a side? After if you were to if Crawford, no, were I'm just talking about like a unified champion. champion. You still have Adrian Broner there to if you want to talk about a unified champion. Yeah, but he doesn't have a belt. He vacated the belt, and that's why Ricky Burns has it. Let's go out to these callers because this is a quick show. We're gonna go to it looks like uh, talk to me, Stephen and and Matt. Who are those people? While we get to Skype, Willy Wonka, talk to me. Willy, Willy, Hello. what's going on? Uh, not much. You guys got this the wrong way around. You guys are too hardcore for this. You you want to see an undisputed champion. But I think this is for Adrian Bronner. They want to unify because they want Adrian Bronner to fight. Because Ricky Burns is broke. And he just started fighting Alert, again. Tom Callender. Gaining a bit of money. Potential and now he wants Adrian Bronner. He wants to make the money fight. And that's about it. The guy's washed up. He's no good. 
He's going to win this fight, fight Adrian Brana, lose to him, and then retire. And then I'd like to see a fight between Adrian Brana and Terence Crawford for the undisputed. If he fights Broner next, that they would were talking be Bob about Aaron's that a few fault. months ago. Remember? I know they were, but if he fights Broner next, that would be Bob Arum's fault. That would mean that Heyman offered Ricky Burns more money. Terence needs this fight more than Broner. Broner hasn't done anything significant in the division. This would be another opportunity to masquerade as a multiple division, multiple belt champion. You know, and 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 really, if Burns unifies and Broner beats Burns, you can't take that away because we already gave Crawford credit for doing it maybe two years ago. Does yeah, it does they match so between cool. Crawford and Burns again sell in any way? Absolutely. If 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 the idea would be for Burns to beat Indongo, face Broner, Broner beat Burns, and unify with Crawford on pay per view, I'm all for it. But that is a sweet sweet world that we don't live in. Yo, I totally agree because I think that you could sell a unification for undisputed champ in a different division. Because remember, wasn't that fight at lightweight when they fought? Yes. Right. So now this would be a junior. This is a different division. Unification. Sell Ricky Burns and Terrence Crawford probably on pay per view at least in the UK because it would be a rematch. With it's a building rivalry. Oh, would Terrence Crawford go back to the UK again? He why almost got robbed it? there. He almost why got robbed it? there. Come on. You crazy man! The the amount of money they're gonna give him, Willy Wonka. Crawford doesn't care about. Come on, Crawford. Willy. How many trucks of gas do they dump on Crawford to go back across the pond? Crawford won't be sold here on pay per view. No chance. Oh, versus Burns. Wow. Yeah, In a sense. unification, wow. of undisputed four titles on the line. You gotta be kidding me, man! You got to be no, kidding me. No chance. Crawford won't be sold. He won't make Adrian Bronner for no titles. He'll be sold on pay per view here. More than Crawford. That's obviously a thing of opinion. Listen, Willie, let me get to some other callers. We're going to Donald in Richmond, California. Talk to me. Man, I agree with you, Ness. That would sell Ricky Burns and Terrence Crawford rematch in the UK. That would sell. With all those titles on the line, that would definitely sell. But we don't know which way it will go because if Ricky Burns wins this fight, we don't know who he's going to fight next. And if Ricky Burns loses this fight, I can see – Julius taking a fight with Terrence Crawford without a doubt. So it's a lot of ifs and buts. We can't predict which way it will go because we don't know who's going to win the fight. And we can know which way it will go if Julius wins the fight and we'll know which way it will go if Ricky wins the fight. But I doubt if Ricky wins the fight, I doubt he fights Broner next because we know he'll lose to Broner. Like the other guy said, if he fights Broner and he loses, he probably wouldn't retire because he'll probably get a good payday. But Man, it's a it's, it's too much ifs and who if who be who and who's gonna fight who. Well, there's no this ifs. Very interesting. No, no, there's no ifs if we keep yeah. it. If we keep it, uh, it's a it, you know, in what it is, Burns versus Andango. We know that's a unification. That's you know three titles for anybody who believes in the IBO, like uh, Chris Eubank Jr. and Senior. You know, he's got the IBO, the IBF, and we got the WBO all on the line. You know what they do next is only adding to the, uh, you know, ultimate entree. But right now, this appetizer seems very interesting. This is very interesting. I, w I would really love to see Terrence Crawford be the unified, undisputed champion and have all the titles at 140. And then after that, maybe defend it one or two times and then go to 147. That's what I would like to see. All right, Donald. Well, thank you for calling in. Remember... Hold on, nice. Uh, other, other than Tuesday and Sunday, live at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, other than uh, getting all the belts, how does fighting Ricky Burns for Crawford help get him a Manny Pacquiao fight? How does that help him in the U.S. market prove that he has some markability that he has a Because if the fight's in the U.K., it's going to be isolated in the U.K., in my opinion. No, it won't. It'll still be aired on HBO, and he'll still. But at be like two, at like two p.m., you know that, and and it's gonna get what, you know, five hundred thousand views. A million, a million. The last listen. A the million. Last, Come on, no way. Let me no speak. Way. Let me speak. The last five o'clock show for HBO. Look it up, producer. It did close to a million. If Wasn't that Anthony Joshua? If no, that not, if not ten eight five point something, I be, I bet you go check it out. Listen, if you're listening to this now, later in the future, doesn't matter. Hit that thumbs up. Very important. 
Remember to rate us five stars on iTunes. We're bringing that heat. This is the second one today. We'll be back at 7 p.m. Eastern time with our flagship show where you call in, you make your predictions for Badu Jack, James DeGale, Jose Pedraza versus Gravanza Davis. We even got, uh, who else is on that on the card? I keep forgetting this, man. There's a third good fight, sexy fight. Help me, guys. Help me, help me, help me. Anyway, in the meantime, 1-425-569-5241 is the number to call in if you want to voice your opinion right now or later at 7 p.m. where we'll be talking all this weekend's fights. We'll have the schedule up so we won't mess up like that. And remember, if you want to be part of the TBV reunion taking place March 3rd on the eve of Danny Garcia versus Keith Thurman, remember, we bring out the big guests. If you haven't checked out our, uh, you know, parties, check them out on YouTube. Just type in the Boxing Voice Appreciation Night and uh, check out how our listeners receive rewards, prizes, actual sanctioning body belts, T-shirts, bags, and more. Definitely a lot to go around. Head on over to theboxingvoice.com forward slash reunion to RSVP. Your tickets now. We're going to Chicago. Carmelo, talk to me. What up with it, though? Hey, man, y'all don't sleep on Julius, man. Don't sleep on Julius, though. The way Ricky Barnes looked in that last fight, even though it was a, it was a short fight with, with Julius and uh, Tolanowski or whatever his name is, uh, Ricky Barnes didn't look good in that last fight. And if he get caught, Julius like he got the power to knock him out. As far as moving forward, you know, it's like whoever whoever got the belt should go for a big money fight. Either it be Julius or, or Barnes. I know I know Barnes is a bigger name, and that that'd be more lucrative for who either it be Broner or um or or um Crawford. But I think at the end of the day, everybody's gonna want to see Broner and Crawford fight in a perfect world to get that fight. But hopefully, hopefully it just be good fights, man, and we get the fights that the fans want to see. Just like a good start to 2017. I'm going to be calling back in tonight. I'm short for this on my call, but I'll hear from y'all tonight, man. Y'all hear from me tonight. Yo, Carmelo, uh, Carmelo if uh, Ndongo uh, stops Burns in the first round again, do you think he's a legit threat to Terrence Crawford? Yes or no? I'm, I'm, I'm going to say no because Crawford got too many tools. You know, he, he cannot knock two other guys out. You know, I think Crawford is an elite fighter. So to that question, no. I don't think he could go give Crawford that many much troubles if he knocked out the pre- two previous guys because I don't think either of those guys are going to the level. Well, all right, Carmelo. Thank you for calling in. Um, all right, so later on tonight. Join us every Thursday and Sunday live at 7 p.m. Eastern time. That's 4 o'clock your time, right, Stephen and Matt? Yeah, my West Coast guys, and that means it's six o'clock Central Time. Later on tonight, we'll be talking and making our picks. This is Prediction Day Thursday, ladies and gentlemen. Sunday is Eat Your Crow Sunday, or do your 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 dance? You know, do your little dance, sing your little song. It is Landry Lara versus Yuri Foreman. Twelve rounds for Laura's. WBA junior middleweight title will be making our predictions, preview and predictions for that fight. Andre Durrell versus Nobert Nemesepity, something like that. Miguel Cruz taking on Alex Martin. That's another little banger we need to talk about. Carlos, Juan Carlos Payano, my Dominican brethren, is back. He's going to be taking on uh, Isau Gonzalo Carnassa. Bantam weights. If you're interested, we got Joey Hernandez, who we seen last out versus uh, Austin Trout. He's back in a six rounder. Dennis Galaza is also back. He's a stablemate of Erickson Lubin. Check him out. He's trained by the same trainer. He's in a six rounder. Um, and then over on Showtime tomorrow, excuse me, Saturday night, we'll be discussing. But this is all happening today, Thursday, at 7 p.m. Eastern. We'll be giving our preview and prediction for Badu Jack versus James DeGale, that WBC IBF super middleweight unification. That is one I cannot wait for. Go check out my interview on YouTube with uh, Badu Jack, Gravanta Davis, Jose Pedraza, just about everybody, even the good friend uh, Coogan Cassius got on the camera with us. Um, and also we're going to be doing previews and prediction for Jose Pedraza and Gravante Davis. We've already given our prediction and breakdowns on a previous video. You could check that out while you wait for Sunday's live 
excuse me, while, while you wait for tonight's live one. Um, and Amanda Serrano, she's going to be taking on Yasmina Rivera. I seen Yasmin yesterday. I haven't put up her, you know, video of her or anything like that, but she seems small, man. Poor things might, she might get ran over by uh, Serrano for sure, for sure. It's going to be, uh, you know, a serious one, but another extremely good fight that's going to be happening that we have to break down is if then Keytroff versus Emmanuel Aline. Keytroff is trained by Gary Stark Sr. Anybody? The, the name. I know, Steven. You know, you're making the face. You're like, wait, that sounds familiar. I think I know. I, who's Gary Starks? I heard that name. That's right. We were talking about him not too long ago and how he's part of the super team for Daniel Jacobs. And guess what? Keytroff is Ukrainian. Same crop of Ukrainians with uh, Lamachenko and Ustek and Dervachenko, uh, Sergei Dervachenko, that is. You know, this guy is the heat. This is like his 14th, 15th fight, something like that. And um, he's bringing it for sure. He's, he's expected a knockout. You can check out my interview with both he and his trainer, Gary Starks. You know, um, Emmanuel Lima, I, I got to talk to him, but not on camera. He was headed out. I, I can't tell you how well he looked. He was definitely bundled up. Um, he's from the DMV Baltimore area, so I guess he expected the cold. Uh, Adam Wanaki would also be on this undercard. And Julian Sosa, he's going on in a six-round welterweight fight. I got to check that one out. That's a stablemate of Chris Colbert, who trains out of the Teddy Atlas Cops and Kids, you know, where Keith Tapia and, uh, ooh, I can't remember the other guy. He's undefeated. He's like a, a lightweight or super middleweight, uh, maybe 11 fights, something Herc, something like that. But a lot, a lot of boxing taking place this week. And even Thomas DeLorme is back. You know he signed the Mayweather promotion. He's been training over there and in Puerto Rico. We got Kenny Robles back on the card as well. So just so much boxing to talk about. Listen, we're going to go ahead and wrap this one up. But, uh, guys, any final thoughts on Ricky Burns unifying? I, I really want to just congratulate Burns, to be honest with you. I mean, this takes some balls. Like, Burns could easily get a soft touch with anybody in Scotland and sell well. But here he is trying to unify with a perceived puncher. We don't know in Dango. At least I don't. And I'm more hardcore than most. And, uh, you know, we, we're just not sure does he have power because we didn't know who the fuck was uh, uh, Travosky. Who the fuck is that guy? Tell me about it, Connor. I mean, look, I don't know. So we got to see what uh, Ndango is going to do versus a guy that we do know. We do know that Burns can take some punches. He's taking all my Figueroa's punches. He's taking Terrence Crawf Crawford's punches. Um, uh, Jonathan Gonzalez's punches. Just so many people that he's fought. Well, I might have said that name wrong. It might have been Jose Gonzalez, something like that. But it's definitely Gonzalez that was giving him all he could handle to the, I think he broke his hands out there in the, the UK. Listen, uh, damn, we got Joey in Indiana. Joey, make it snappy, pappy. Yo, I just... Call, call in and say what's up, Ness. I'm tuning in, man. But I'll, I'll call in later tonight. Nah, my brother, come on, man. You know your alumni right here. Talk to me, man. You got time. We even cut the music for yeah, you. No, hey, real quick. So, uh, basically, Ricky Burns is, I'm kind of lost on the top. I heard you briefly talk about it. He's going to be unifying the title? Yes, he is. He's taking on that guy, um, Julius, Julius Dongo that knocked out Edward Travarsky, the, the so, quote-unquote guy that Terrence Crawford was ducking according to the world or the weirdos oh wow okay now is, is, is you think broner's still gonna go after burns after this fight against granados is that still possible i'm sure everybody's gonna go after burns especially if he wins two titles <laughs> cool man that's what's up man yeah there's, i ain't got much man i'm just uh i got a text you the other day man i got my seats for that broner fight man and uh i'm excited because i heard that lamont peterson got added to the card Yes, sir, I Lamont. Think, I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that. I got to check that one out. He's fighting, He's fighting a David Abbott or something like that. Got to check that one out. Yeah. Who, David Abbott Who, David Abbott Yeah, that guy. Yeah. Oh, that guy. and that's on the Broner card? Yep. Oh, my God. Yeah. They're not playing. I got to book my flight, man, before those tickets. That card is ridiculously stacked. That card is ridiculously stacked. But you know what? They're slacking. This, Why are they slacking? I got you, you don't worry slacking? about it. I got you, Joey. I'll be out there without a doubt, man. Listen, they're ridiculously slacking, though, because the press conference was announced the same day. Like, they sent emails like, today, Adrian Broner had a press conference, and uh, Granados, Broner, and Floyd. That's it. 
Like when there's so many fighters, look, name all those fighters that's on that card and, and they're not going to get to be on the fucking, I mean, you know, we talk about Triple G and Jacobs needing to do promotion and, and, and things like that, but everybody needs to promote. But look, don't let me rant. Rants are usually for Thursday night show. You know, we're going to get up out of here. We want to thank everybody that tuned in. Obviously, if you're watching this in the future, present, past, hit that thumbs up button. You know, hit it. If you don't like me, hit it for Steven. Hit it for Matt. Hit it for the hardcore hipster show. Whatever you want to do, make sure you let us know. Come check us out on Patreon if you really like the show. Support us there. Get extra exclusive content plus giveaways. We got autographed gloves, you know, memorabilia. I mean, shirts, everything. It's going down in Patreon. That's where it's like Crazy Eddie, but you're probably too young for that. Anyway, I'm going to go to my co-host here. They're going to let you know where they can find you uh, or find you can find them. Hey, so uh, you asked me a question earlier about HBO um, when they had a show in the middle of the day. Well, do you, if you remember when uh, Gennady fought Brooke, that was uh, aired for, you know, obviously it was over there in the UK. Right. So it was over day. Uh, It peaked at 900,000. Oh, snap. Nasty. Just under a million. Babe, but that's still good numbers. That's, fucking, oh, that's Gennady. That's fucking still really good numbers. Kid. That's Gennady. That's, this, guy, fucking love kid. You, though, this guy, he's going to get the award for most negative of the fucking... <laughs> Nine hundred thousand. Oh snap, Ness. Oh, yo, what school he went to? Cause I know I'm not the brightest, but I thought we round to the tenth power, to the tenth, you know, to the fifth, whatever. Up, well, we don't up. round. There's the numbers. The we number. Round like we don't. We round, <laughs> we round up. We don't go down, especially when you pass the five. But no, you want to. You want to go down. You're like, oh, that's bad. Nah. <laughs> No bueno. Supposed to round up and, and be happy with the sport that we love. Listen, I am your host, Nesta Gibbs. Find me on Instagram and Twitter at NestGTO. And I'm Stephen Calderon, the producer. You can find me on Twitter at Calderon92 and Instagram at sugar underscore Steve dot C. And I'm Matt, the editor. You can find me at Mixed Combat News on Twitter. Later.